Hello, fabulous friends and fans. Welcome to your horoscope for the week of May 11, 2014. I am your astrologer, Nadia Shaw. Thank you for being here. Now, just a, a quick reminder for those of you who like to jump ahead, I do encourage you to watch the intro because it does tend to denote some energies that we will be uh, collectively experiencing together, collectively reflecting in the sky our own experiences here. And also with the introduction, I find it does allow you to understand sort of the technical stuff from which I am then going forward uh, to look at each individual sign and looking forward at what's coming up ahead for you. And so I'd encourage you to watch it, but if you're the type who likes to jump ahead to your sign at any given point, you can use the timestamps in the YouTube description to do just that. And I thank you so much for watching. So lately, the last couple of weeks, I've been talking about the Cardinal Grand cross, okay? And what essentially this is, is a major configuration in the sky. So I do want to give you a little bit of a very mini, very quick astrology lesson so that I can then jump into this week and talk about what's so good that's happening this week to counter some of that energy. Because a lot of people have been like, oh my God, is this something I should be spooked out about? And I've been talking about this at length. Of course not. Nothing in the universe is to be spooked out about. It is to be a Approached with a sense of how can I utilize this to move myself towards greater love and greater wisdom, which I believe is our collective yearning, our collective growth is in that direction individually and together as well. And so what is taking place is the sky is divided up into 12 signs and these 12 signs fall into one of three modalities and four elements. And so the four elements are water, fire, air, and earth. Okay. And these elements operate in different ways. And it is the modality that tells us the way in which they operate. Now, Western astrology is based on the season. So the cardinal signs fall at the beginning of the season and tend to denote an energy that is about starting fresh, that is about the new. And so when I talk about cardinal grand cross it is these very signs that are being highlighted right now now planets that are in cardinal signs putting aside mathematical uh, precision peak moments in conversations between planets planets that are in the same modality are said to be square. And what that means is that they have a point, and again, putting aside peak moments, mathematical precision, just going by modality, two planets in different modalities are said to be having a conversation of tension, of energy, and of motivation. Without these types of conversations, we don't identify what isn't working, and we don't have the energy to make changes. When two planets are in the same element, they are said to be trine. And what that means is that they are having a conversation that is supremely harmonious. Because if you think about it, elements two planets in the same element will tend to, and again, huge generalization here, I know, but this is a mini very beginner lesson in astrology, but two planets in the same element will be said to work together much more nicely, to play together much more nicely, to allow harmony to take place, faith to take place, to allow an easy flow of energy to happen. Okay, so there's the mini astrology lesson. And how that's relevant to, to this week is that we have this week Venus stepping in to activate the Cardinal Grand Cross. So this is basically... Um, these placements setting up a large formation, a major formation that is sort of an amplification of the square pattern that I just spoke about. But what we also have happening now is that the full moon in the middle of the week is going to set up a grand trine. And so just like the grand cross, which is generally a bunch of squares, a bunch of planets getting together, squaring each other. We are going to have a bunch of placements getting together, a bunch of planets getting together and trining each other. And so we've got this really interesting mix of energy happening this week, where on one hand, we are being asked to further look at where it is that we want change and to summon the energy to do so. And at the same time, we have 
the tremendous blessing of the universe to actually manifest that change in some cases almost instantly, but always with an element of faith and just a little bit of work, allowing ourselves to see the benefits of actually making those changes. And so we've got the tension there continuing, but what we have that I think is more significant is this tremendous amount of harmonious energy happening now, which suggests to me that whatever tension sort of come up right now are very much a part of us quickly conveying that information into our highest advantage and very consciously so, so in our long-term advantage as well. And so what is setting off the Cardinal Grand Cross this week is Venus. As I said, Venus is going to be first in the early part of the week, stand across from Mars, and then Venus will speak with Pluto and then to, at the very end of the week, Venus will meet Uranus in the sky before in the early part of next week, speaking with Jupiter as well. So this whole week and early next week is about this Cardinal Grand Cross being highlighted now thanks to Venus. And Venus is, as I've said, the goddess of love. And she also represents, to a certain extent, um, money as well, prosperity, if you will, the feeling of prosperity, the feeling that you um, can attract the resources that you need, that you deserve to attract, that you deserve to receive. That is what Venus represents. And so that very part of us is going to be challenged this week, largely because we need to find a certain sense of grounding for this energy. And this is really good because actually, I do think that these questions that arise now are a part of setting ourselves up very nicely to ground our sense of worth and humility to make sure that we are setting ourselves up for greater prosperity, certainly, and a prosperity that we can actually believe in, and love as well that we can actually believe in, love that is self-defined, that is stable and secure. What we also have happening this week that I spoke about in many of the monthly videos for the month of May is that we have this very important full moon taking place in the sign of Scorpio right in the middle of the week. Now, this full moon will be happening right with Saturn and speaking in harmony with Jupiter, while Jupiter is speaking in harmony with Chiron. And I look at this configuration together. I look at how this playing, this is playing out. And this is really a grand trine. As I said, this is supreme harmony happening in the sign of water. And water is an element of emotion. It's an element of change. It's an element of understanding what has served its purpose so that you can be connected to a greater source of wisdom and a greater source of truth. And when we have this type of conversation being set up to me, Jupiter trine Chiron is about understanding that you've done the work and that whatever lessons, whatever healing need to happen, needed to happen has happened. You've done the work. You don't need to go over that ground again. You don't need to go through that lesson again because you get it, the proverbial getting it and feeling like something deep within you is healed. Some major lesson is done and you're ready to move on. And this is highlighted to me by the fact that there's a full moon happening. But you add to the fact that Saturn is in the mix, Saturn and Jupiter. Now it's been said that Jupiter needs Saturn to ground it. Jupiter is all about the dream. It's about the belief. It's about the connection. It's about understanding things from an energetic place. It's about belief. But Saturn is about reality. Saturn is about really understanding that it's one thing to believe. It's great to believe. It's another thing to actually trust the process and stick with it long enough to manifest. And that's what we have joining forces here now in Supreme Harmony, where there's an understanding that it's great to have your vision. It's great to have an understanding. But how does that actually help? you in practical terms? How is that actually going to help you to create a better life for yourself? That becomes revealed now in the most inspiring sense of the word. So while all these major conversations, configurations are playing out, marking a truly special time, an important time for many of us, we also have Mercury joining in the mix. And so what this means is Mercury is going to be helping us by delivering the messages we need, having the random interactions we need, seeing the right Facebook posts or 
videos, running into the right videos online, seeing the right information that we need to decide what it is that we actually want to do with everything that we are feeling and helping us along to gain clarity and to understand things on a mind level, on a level of intellect, and very quickly allows us to turn, us, turn that into action. So... Early in the week, Mercury will be speaking in square in tension with Neptune before very quickly moving on to speak in harmony with Mars. And to me, this suggests that there is the possibility that some of us will either be thinking kind of pessimistically or may get news that may on the surface seem disappointing. But very quickly, that is translated into empowerment, into energy, into mental clarity. But more than that, action. Mars is action. And Mercury Mercury speaking in harmony with Mars is really hearing the right words that spur you to action to empower yourself. And then later on in the week, Mercury will be speaking to Uranus and Venus meeting in the sky at the same time. And so when I see this configuration, now normally Venus meeting Uranus, as I spoke about in some of the monthly horoscopes out there, this configuration normally would suggest just like romantic surprises that really could go either way. Sometimes may not go off very well. With Mercury in the mix, it suggests to me that actually whatever surprises do come romantically, financially, or otherwise, um, there are advantages that are seen right away. We do find the perfect words to make sense of what occurs, and we do find the right way to deliver the message that we desire delivered. Also, with this configuration, it does suggest to me that we are being encouraged to utilize ourselves on many different levels. So we're being encouraged to utilize ourselves, not just on a level of just immediate energy, immediate reaction, as would be with Venus and Uranus, both in fire signs, sort of, it's like stimulus action right away before we have thought. Mercury in the mix tells me that we will get that split second we need to figure out just what it is that we want to say, just what it is that we want to do to plan our reaction. If only we need a split second, we are likely to get that split second. All in all, as I said, I do think this marks an important time for a lot of people, for a lot of signs out there. But what I also really like about this week is that there is an integration of the appreciation that what seems so tough on the surface can actually lead to great inspiration, to great breakthroughs, not just emotionally, but practically as well. Remember, Saturn is involved in this full moon, which tells me that all of us will be advancing in very practical ways, increasing our standing in the best possible sense of the word in the actual earthly environment and we should see improvements in our lives as well how all of this speaks to your sign is coming up right now Hello, fabulous Aries. Well, this week does mark an important turning point for you with Venus moving through your sign, first speaking with your ruling planet, standing across the sky from your ruling planet before moving on to meet Uranus in your sign. And I look at this and it does suggest to me that you're having major insights into matters of love. For some of you, maybe finances, but I think for most of you, this is going to play out in the love sphere. Major insights into love, major changes, understanding what you just do not want to accept anymore, understanding what you do and finding the right words to express what is true for you in love. This is very much the, the way the sky is playing out right now is very much one of those, you know, moment of truth type of configurations taking place. And so whatever your moment of truth is, it will either help you jump towards a person or it'll help you to break that tie. Whatever it is that you need to do to stand in your truth where it comes to love, you will find the right words and you'll find the clarity to finally make your choice. Hello, fabulous Taurus. Well, it is your ruling planet, Venus, that is involved in a lot of the action this week that is part of setting off the Cardinal Grand Cross. And this does suggest to me that really it's you that's striving to understand what needs to change within yourself. And it's you that's really bringing to light some of your deeper motivations as to some of the choices you've made in the recent past where it comes to love 
and where it comes to money as well. And it looks like you're gaining the clarity that you need to understand your way forward. I think a measure of you, a lot of you out there are actually going to be understanding how some of the choices that you've made have been determined by self-worth and love and money and how now you can actually believe in yourself a little bit more so that you can attract better into your life on all fronts. And it is going to be conversations that set up this process and it's likely to be financial conversations. So it's almost as if you have a talk about money, maybe you're looking for work, maybe you want more money and having those interactions lead you to reflect on your life in a much more larger kind of meta way and allow you to see how maybe what you've been asking for, you've been lowballing it because you actually don't think that you can get more. And that's going to allow you to sort of trigger a whole cycle of major change, of major healing to take place for you as well. So talk your feelings out and they will, in the bigger picture, lead you towards greater love and greater prosperity as well. Hello, fabulous Gemini. Well, Mercury continues to move through your sign and is speaking with all the different planets I mentioned in the introduction. And to me, this suggests that it is about you getting clear on who you are. It isn't so much about necessarily what's happening in the outside world, although there is an element of that. There is an element of you looking at your career and maybe, and I'll just put this out there, there is the possibility that something that you've been going for all of a sudden you kind of feel like or you tell yourself that it's out of your league, some accomplishment, some leap that you're trying to make. And that really isn't the case. What I am seeing more than anything is that whatever it is that you're going for, whatever it is that you believe you desire to achieve, you need a plan forward. You need a way towards it. And that is going to um, it is going to present itself to you. So it's almost as if you do hear some news, but along with it, you're given action steps of what you could do to actually improve your circumstances and the work you could do to set yourself up really nicely to have that larger breakthrough just a little bit further down the road and really not that much further down the road. Actually, I do think that later in the late part of the summer is when you're likely to see in the month of August, when you're likely to see the rewards of the actions you take now starting this week. So don't get caught up in any disappointing news that might find you at the earliest part of the week, because really it is there to empower you. Focus on the empowerment, focus on the action, and you're going to find that you create a momentum that pays off big time just a little bit further down the road with a major achievement at that time. Hello, fabulous Cancer. Well, it is Jupiter in your sign getting a boost from the full moon. And I spoke about this extensively in the monthly horoscopes for May. So you are going to want to watch that again because this week does um, provide a peak moment in some of the learning you'll be taking place um, that will be taking place in the issues discussed there. But what I really like about this week for you is that it isn't just about this boost that you feel, this sense of possibility that you feel, but really an opening up on a level of spirit, on a level of soul, on a level of uh, not just the type of possibility that comes when you trust your creativity, but actually seeing a vision open up to you of greater possibility. And what I really like about what's taking place for you right now is that something within you by embracing that higher vision is healed very deeply. You are being asked to get out of your own way so that you can achieve that bigger dream. You can get to that bigger goal. And it certainly is available to you if you will allow yourself to just glimpse it, to just see it. It wants to reveal itself to you. At the very least, in the middle of the week, I just see you feeling really good, filled with faith, and filled with the belief that some of the tougher things that were really weighing on your spirit, really weighing on your heart, some of those tougher things are now behind you. And you can and move forward with a more empowered sense of self. Hello, fabulous Leo. Well, there's a lot going on in the sky now in fellow air sign Aries with Venus and 
Uranus being triggered by other elements in the sky. And I look at this and it does suggest to me that you are being asked to get in touch with your fire for life. You are being asked to get in touch with a sense of enthusiasm for your life, a sense of adventure and seeing the joy in that adventure. This particular configuration is saying that it's not so much about attaining a goal. It's not so much about achieving a thing. It is about the joy of of the journey. It is about understanding that knowing you're on the path to something, that is what raises a level of enthusiasm more than actually getting the thing. And so I would invite you to be open to the possibility that a lot of good things are playing out for you right now and that you are being set up really nicely to experience advancements in just about every area of your life. And I speak about this in the Jupiter special video, which you will see posted this month as well. And in these videos, I talk about how you are really on the, on the edge of launching into a brand new 12 year cycle of greater and greater opportunity. This week provides you with a moment of breath, a moment of respite, a moment of belief, and a moment of getting in touch with and glimpsing what it is that actually you want that new cycle to represent. So allow that to present itself to you knowing that even bigger breakthroughs and actual physical changes are coming up just a little bit further down the road. Hello, fabulous Virgo. Well, it is your ruling planet that is reaching out to a lot of different players in the sky this week, which does suggest a busy week. A lot is happening for you. Now, I'm going to just put this out there because at the very beginning of the week, we have Mercury speaking with intention with um, Neptune before very quickly speaking in harmony with other power players. And we have Jupiter speaking in supreme harmony at the full moon um, with Chiron. And both Neptune and Chiron are in your opposite sign. And so I look at this and it does suggest to me that there might be some of you out there that feel at the very beginning of the week an element of disappointment in another person, a partner. And this may be related to love and it may be related to you where you feel that you had some sort of heightened expectations or some expectations that that person didn't meet. Now, again, this won't be all of you out there, but there may be a small percentage of you that feel this way, or it may just be larger disappointment in love in general, a disappointment in being able to attract the right people to support what it is that you want to do. And I look at this, but I also look at how very quickly the energy changes, how very quickly you are being empowered to take action first and foremost on your own behalf. You're being empowered financially, certainly, but also because when I look at at this full moon, we have Jupiter speaking in such harmony with Chiron, whatever issues should come up, it looks like a conversation is likely to resolve any issues. And it looks like as a result of what comes up, you are able to come to a new understanding about love. And for some of you, a new closeness to another person as well. And really it comes down to what type of relationship do you believe that you're worthy of? And what do you believe your worthiness is where it comes to attracting the right partner for you? You're about to take leaps ahead in this process of understanding love and understanding self-worth as well. Be open to it because it is you that is shifting definition and it is you that is coming to understand that you deserve a lot more than you previously held to be true. Hello, fabulous Libra. This week, Mars in your sign is going to begin a divine slowdown as he begins to prepare to go forward in the early part of next week. And so this is a time when Mars energy and your sign are really potent. And this is a time where a lot of the lessons that you've been going through over the course of the last few months are really going to start coming home for you. So Yes, it's an important week for a lot of people, given all the things I talked about in the introduction, but the importance of this time is heightened for you. It truly is a very important week for you. And if you think back to what was taking place in your life in the very last days of 2013, so at the very end of December 2013, what was happening for you at that time? You should experience sort of a, a reawakening, a remembrance, um, sort of a resurgence of the same events that were taking place for you at that time are going to come up again for your consideration. And so this is the time that you want to watch because 
That was the time when Mars went into shadow at the very end of 2013. Now is the time as Mars prepares, slows down, prepares to stand still as he prepares to go direct, that a lot of learning is going to come home for you. Don't underestimate the power of a good conversation. Uh, don't underestimate the power of expanding your worldview, of considering new ideas, new philosophies, new ways of considering things, because it really is approaching the different, the new, that is going to open a window up, that is going to help you to understand how the universe has been attempting to move you as part of your unique journey towards greater love and greater wisdom. And these are the days to watch. I'll be here next week to talk about Mars moving direct, but now is the time to pay attention. A lot is going to be shifting for you, not the least of which is marked by this very important transition that Mars is going to start making in your sign this week. Hello, fabulous Scorpio. This week, the full moon in your sign really says it all. I spoke about this at length in the monthly horoscopes for your sign. And so I'd encourage you to watch those again right about now because it is this particular week that marks a time of an important understanding for you as to what has served its purpose, what part of your identity has served its purpose, what you're truly ready to let go of, and whether that letting go involves forgiveness whether it involves practical changes, which it will for a lot of you out there, or just involves stepping into a more adult role for your life. This is a week when a major transition occurs for you, where you understand where you are now and exactly where it is that you're headed based on what is most true to you in your heart is no longer what it was. And it's no longer based in naivete. It's no longer based in an old identity, but a new identity of yourself. And you are really willing willing to cut ties where needed. You're willing to understand your future and your future prospects in a much more grounded way. But it looks like the most likely scenario for a lot of you is that you see that the path that you're on right now is not going to lead you to a major closely held goal or dream. Something that you really want to do with your life is not going to be possible if you keep operating along the same way, in the same modality, in the same way. And so it's you that's got to change. If you want anything in your life to change, it's been said again and again by a lot of spiritual teachers out there and more practically oriented teachers as well. If you want anything to change, the change has to start with you. This is that week when some very important changes start to shift within you and start to happen within you. And it's a part of seeing yourself differently and identifying very differently as well as to who you are and just what it is that you're capable of and just what it is that you most want next. Hello, fabulous Sagittarius. Your ruling planet is speaking in supreme harmony, not only with this full moon, but also with Chiron. And I find this especially inspired. I do think that you are about to shift something very deep within you. Some understanding of your past is about to have new light shed on it. If there have been any parts of your past where you felt sore, where you have felt uh, that things were not fair for you, you are now going to get a fresh perspective, a new insight that seems to change just about everything for you, that allows you to see how Actually, you know what? The universe has been working with you this whole time. That everything that was, was what it needed to be to get you to this point. And so what I'm seeing is something that you saw as a great hurt. All of a sudden you realize, oh my God, so much that is so great actually came from that. So much that's so good actually sprung forward from that. And I do think some of you out there are actually going to find yourself really grateful for someone who you previously thought had done you wrong wrong or had not been very fair to you in the past. So there's this sense of gratitude for all that was and who has been a part of your life as well. And what I really like about this uh, particular week is that it looks like partnership, love, the pursuit of love is part of triggering a lot of this understanding for you as well. And it looks like as a result of these understandings, something within you learns that actually you can be more comfortable with yourself than you previously realized. There's a sense of self-love, a sense of self-acceptance, a sense of deep comfort in yourself and your place in 
the world that is awakened for you now. So trust the process that is leading you forward and it is leading you forward somewhere very good. Hello, fabulous Capricorn. This week with this particular Cardinal Grand Cross, again, being awakened for you, but this time by Venus, this time in a conversation, or at least not a conversation that's much more uh, pleasing, but at least by a planet that likes to deliver her message a little bit more softly than some others. I look at this configuration playing out and it does suggest to me that there's a sense of acceptance with you now. There's a sense of you looking at what it is that you believe that you're worthy of and a sense that it really is asking yourself some tough questions that can lead to the greatest breakthroughs and the greatest possibilities as well. Now, consider the fact also also that we have this particular full moon happening in a sign that is harmonious to yours. And we have at the same time, Jupiter in your opposite sign, speaking in supreme harmony with Chiron. I look at all this playing out and it suggests to me that love becomes a really soft spot in which you can land, which you can feel that you're ready to resolve any issues of the past and move forward in. But more than that, what I really like about this week is the fact that Venus is moving through a part of the sky that has to do with home, helps you understand how you do have actually the foundation of love you need to do just about anything you desire to do in the world. There's a sense of empowerment now and a sense of acceptance of what was, but also a sense that greater and greater things are possible to you. And this month and this week, they certainly are. Hello, fabulous Aquarius. Well, with this particular full moon playing out in the middle of the week and right around the same time, you've got your ruling planet being met by Venus and speaking in harmony with Mercury. It does suggest that this particular full moon happening with your ancient ruling planet and these other configurations playing out suggests to me that you are coming to an understanding, a greater understanding of just what it is that you desire to do in the world, what it is that you desire to accomplish. Now, I do think that there's going to be some of you out there, a measure of you out there actually, that are likely to begin to hear news this week and into next that leads to a major breakthrough where it comes to your career and where it comes to a sense of accomplishment, where it comes to you feeling like, I did it. That's the feeling I'm seeing with some of you out there. I did it. I wanted it. I worked for it and I did it. And now I have it. So there's certainly um, authority figures and people who are seeing greater possibility with you, who are on your side who, side, who want to lift you, who want to propel you forward. And so you can embrace that possibility as well. And at the same time, I am seeing that you are having the right conversations you need, meeting the right people that you need to, to move your life in a more fulfilling direction as well. And the tension that's around us, we've got this great mix, as I spoke in the intro, tension and harmony. The tension there seems to enliven you. It seems to lift you and spur you on to accomplish greater and greater things and lead you towards greater fulfillment as well. Hello, fabulous Pisces. Your ruling planet, Neptune, your modern ruling planet, is being spoken to by Mercury early in the week. And Chiron in your sign is being spoken to in supreme harmony by Jupiter in the middle of the week at the full moon, setting up a very harmonious conversation for you and a very harmonious conversation that involves a placement in your sky in fellow water signs. So this grand trine in the element of water is going to speak right to the heart of you. And I want you to consider how when we have this configuration at the very beginning of the week, your ruling planet speaking in tension with the ruler of your opposite planet, 
planet. Now, this to me does suggest that maybe you start to feel like you've got other options in love that could be better, or you wish you had other options, or you're disappointed with your options, um, or you wish that a partner understood you more. That seems to be sort of the overriding feeling at the very early part of the week as a possibility. But what I really love about what's taking place here now is that as that energy happens, very quickly the energy starts to shift for you, starts to change for you, where you actually see that a moment of some confused feelings where it comes to love give way to almost like a floodgate opening and a huge release happening and you getting any blocks out of the way from understanding love on a much deeper level. This week, a lot of things can shift for you on a level of heart, on a level of spirit as well, and on a level of possibility. You are owning your right to live a fulfilled life in every area of life. You are owning your right to experience greater love and greater fun as well. And this particular full moon is setting the stage very nicely to help you get anything out of the way that gets in the way of that greater parts of life. And you are moving towards greater love as will become very evident to you over the course of this week when any disappointments in the early part of the week quickly give way to an, a sense of expansion, a sense of being lifted, and a sense of being healed thanks to love. Well, I will stop there. Thank you so much to all signs out there. It'll be a great week. Enjoy. Enjoy.